All right, everyone, welcome to Sour Horsepower, and today we're going to be taking a look at this 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. All right, everyone, so here on the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland, um, some couple differences on the front compared to the Grand Cherokee L. Uh, mainly, the thing that I've noticed here is a center bar that goes across the, the lower grille there. The Overland does give us all the chrome trim and the top part, the seven slats here as well, along the outside of the lower grille and the chrome tow hooks. Um, we do have some rather small fog lights here and then we have the LED headlights up here with your daytime running light going here across the top standard Jeep logo there on the hood nothing too spectacularly designed now the front end design of the new Grand Cherokees is quite controversial so go ahead and let me know in the comments below whether you like the styling or you like the old styling a little bit better moving along here we have the 20 inch wheels they are wrapped in 265 50 20 Bridgestone Ecopia tires moving down along the side here Grand Cherokee along the bottom American flag here they started doing that with the redesign some chrome trim that goes along the top roof rails there you go keep moving along the back got a little spoiler up here nothing too um, crazy looking now taking a look at the back of the vehicle we do have the, the split tail lights just a single line for your um, brake lights going across the bottom, turn signals and stuff here. Jeep across the middle with a little black piece going across the split up the tail lights, and then continues over here as well. Overland badge. Integrated ex dual exhaust even here. This is the V6 model. Go ahead and take a look at the engine here in a minute. Got a, the tow package on this right here, so that cover pops off to reveal the hitch underneath. And of course, 4x4, four four, as all Jeeps should be. All right, so let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at the engine real quick. All right, so here we go, the standard V6, and basically every Jeep, uh, 3.6 liter. I'm going to put the power stats and the fuel economy up here on the screen so you can see it. Uh, but yeah, uh, no real changes needed here because it's we know it's reliable. And um, yeah, they're going to run for basically ever as long as you take care of them. So yeah, nothing really new and updated here. So let's go ahead and jump into the interior where all the magic happens on these new Jeeps. All right, so we'll start off by look, taking a look at the door uh, panel here real quick. Uh, we're kind of following all the new Jeep design. This carries over between the Grand Cherokee L, like I've shown before, uh, and the Grand Wagoneer all have the similar design with the wood up top. We've got memory seats here. And then your window controls, mirror controls. This one does have the Macintosh system. You can see here, this would light up um, when the vehicle's turned on. Couple, uh, cup holder and some storage pockets down there. But let's go ahead and jump fully inside. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the seats before I sit in them. Nice overland embroidery here, some stitching, a little bit of piping, or what was this? Oh, metal backing here, uh, perforated Napa leather. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, window sticker here in a second. But Napa leather here, heated and ventilated seats. Here's your controls here. You got forward, back, um, up and down as well, lumbar support, all that cool stuff. So let's go ahead. Before we jump in, I'll show you the options so that way um, I know what to talk about once we go inside. All right, so apologies for the glare. I'm going to try and keep my, uh, my shadow out of the picture here. But as you can see here, Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland 4x4, base price 56000 Here we have the Baltic Gray with the global black interior. Napa Leather Seats 3.6 liter V6 and the 8-speed. Standard options on the Overland, you get your Jeep Wave membership. I'll put the uh, uh, what the that details uh, here on the screen. But I believe it's a three-year um, paid maintenance plan that comes with the, the Jeep. You also have the Quadratrack 2 four-wheel drive system, select train system, remote start, all the power stuff you could want. The adaptive cruise control is standard on here on the Overland. Uh, let's see, moving on, blind spot, of course, active brake assist, basically everything you need, automatic dimming mirror. Um, let's go ahead and get into the options, though. Let's see, options. 
So the Baltic Gray does cost an extra $395. This one has the Luxury Tech Group as well. So that gives you the Napa seats over the standard leather seats. The uh, auto dimming display, uh, wireless charging pad, and then more adjustable seats. So you get the 12-way adjustable seats. Um, let's see, four zone automatic climate control. And then also for options, we have the front passenger interactive display. We'll show you that. And then of course the upgraded 10.1 inch screen over the standard 8.4 inch screen, which also comes with the 19 speaker Macintosh system there. And that is for an extra 1900 bucks, probably worth it. So total price on this vehicle, 63,615. All right, so now we're inside the Jeep. Let's go ahead and start it up so you guys can see what this looks like. We do have, as you can see, the steering wheel and the seat are also moving. That's the uh, like easy act, easy access, uh, easy exit. I forget what they call it, entry exit. So the seat will return to the last position that you had it in once you exited the vehicle. So I've done a deep dive on my channel into the new Jeep Tech with the dashboard and the 10.1 inch screen. So we're just going to go over a couple things real quick inside the vehicle. I'm not going to give you a full rundown of those in this particular one. If you want to see those again, go ahead and check out maybe my Grand Cherokee L videos. Um, one thing I do want to mention since driving it up here to the spot where, where we are reviewing it, in my Grand Cherokee L review, I gave a lot of uh, grief, I guess you could say, to basically these two air vents up here in relation to the sound. I will say that on this particular vehicle, the sound is not overwhelming coming from the vents. Um, it's kind of back to a standard. Maybe the one that I just tested was, there, maybe there was something wrong with it, but overall, not bad. The sound is fixed, at least on this vehicle. Uh, the 10.1 inch screen, you got a couple buttons over here along the top of it. The automatic stop start, your lane keep, traction control, hazards, parking sensors, and then this is to turn your passenger screen on, which is over here. You might be able to see the outline there, but we'll go ahead and turn that on real quick. And because of the glare, we're gonna have to go over to that seat. So we'll do that in a minute to show you what that's all about. Um, underneath the screen, it's got all your climate controls, your heated and cooled seats. Um, that's basically all you have here. Moving down, you got your USB ports, HDMI passenger. That's interesting. I wonder if they can maybe watch something up there. If you know what that's for, let me know. Or if I figure it out and do some research, I'll put it up here on the screen. I wonder if you can play videos or something on that screen. That would be interesting. Um, down here is where your wireless charger is. Now, I do like this wireless charger a lot more compared to the one, say, on my 2022 Durango because my phone actually fits completely in this and I have the iPhone 13 uh, Pro Max or 12 Pro Max. I think it's the 13 Pro Max, but it, my phone completely fits in there, no problems. On the Durangos, they have like a little outline thing that your phone's supposed to sit in. Doesn't really fit in there. It kind of slides around a little bit and comes out of the wireless charging. Grand Cherokee, plenty of room to fit, basically whichever phone you have. Moving down along here, this is your select terrain stuff. So as you can see, we have rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. Here's where you activate your four wheel drive flow your rotary dial for your shifter, the uh, air suspension here on the Overland, that is gonna be standard on the Overland. Uh, five settings, so you have your entry, exit, your aero, normal, and then like I think it's off-road one and off-road two. Um, this vehicle in particular, I parked it in normal, um, but as you can see here, we are now down an entry, exit, and I believe that's a setting here in the main screen where you can adjust it to where the vehicle automatically lowers when you go to open the door to get in or out. And then down here is also your hill descent control and your neutral indicator for switching into four wheel drive. Low, I should say. Um, down here, cup holders, you got a nice cover. Open it this up. You got two, a two stage sort of center console here. So as you can see, the one thing that I did notice before my Grand Cherokee L, which does seem to continue here, there's no USB or power plugs here in the center console which I found kind of odd. Um, normally they include at least one there, but all of your power and stuff is gonna be up here like we showed earlier. Um, along the dash, we have some nice wood here. At least it appears to be wood. Doesn't necessarily feel like wood, but hey, it at least looks nice. As you can see down there, the Macintosh stereo system is lit up. 
Uh, but overall, let's see what do we got up here. This is your uh, controls for the sunroof. Let's go ahead and open that up real quick. Automatic, so one touch all the way back, and it's a pretty large panoramic roof. Goes all the way back over the rear seats, so as you see the shade stopped once, and then hit it again to open it all the way up. There we go. And then, of course, up here you have your light controls and then a button to open the tailgate. Um, your lights, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Sunglasses holder. Um, <laughs> you get your standard mirror if it's flipped down. If you flip this up, it activates the camera on the tailgate at the top. Um, not sure if I showed that. Um, but there's a tailgate or a camera at the top of the tailgate, which gives you that. And then you can also adjust the settings here. So you can adjust the brightness. Doesn't really show up on camera, but you can see there, you can adjust the, the level of the camera to show you exactly what kind of view you want. Go ahead and flip that back down. Now we'll go ahead and jump into the back seat. I'm going to leave, well, I was gonna say that I was gonna leave my seat in my current driving position, but one, I'm 5'8", so I kind of sit a little forward because I'm short, um, but the seat's also going to go back. Let me see if I can turn that setting off. Let me do that. Actually, that would be smart of me. I'm going to turn that setting off real quick, the entry exit, so I can sit behind where my driving position is and let you know how the rear seat leg room is. All right, so the seat up here is in my current driving position. So the one thing they did with the seats, they kind of like carved them out a little bit to give you a little bit more knee room, but I do have probably about three inches of room between my knee and the back of the front seat I do have a nice little storage net down here similar design on the back doors compared to the front there are manual sunshades if you don't want to add any more darker tint you just do the manual sunshades um, back here this is your climate controls for the back so you can turn those on there you go and turn them off some more power plugs down here as long as as well as a little outlet in the center here we have just a standard like kind of fold down armrest with some cup holders in it as well um this is i will say a little bit less room than the grand cherokee l which is to be expected because the l means like long wheelbase so you do lose a little bit of leg room here in the second row seat and a little bit of storage space here in the back but we'll go ahead and open that up real quick uh, from the back and take a look at it actually before we do that i just noticed something look at that it's like all the generations of jeep grand cherokee how cool is that all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the back so as you see power tailgate um so even though this isn't the grand cherokee l there is still a massive amount of space back here so let me go ahead and move this out of the way so these are the um the front floor mats that go up in the front seats as you can see here i mean they're standard size floor mats but you still have a whole like foot of room past the uh floor mats for storage space got a bunch of like um tie down location or actually that's for the um the shade that comes over the back the privacy blocker you got a subwoofer it appears to be back here some tie downs up here it's um plenty of space now let's see what's Underneath should be a spare tire. Yep, full size spare, it appears. Nope, not well, technically, not really a full size spare. This is on an 18 inch uh, rim, so probably the same size diameter tire. It has to be for the four wheel drive system, but um, not a full size spare as you'd like to see. Uh, some storage bins here on the outsides of the tire, and it looks like a little jack down there, but yeah, overall plenty of room back here and then here's your button to go ahead and one press of that and the tailgate closes down all right so this is the passenger display i had to go ahead and turn the brightness up on it because it was quite dim but at least it's good to know that there is an adjust the brightness feature you can also turn it off or power it off completely and here manage your wireless headphones so let's go ahead and hit home take a look at this so it shows you your audio it does say video and hdmi so um i would like to test that one day let me know in the comments if you have a new uh, brand new grand cherokee if you've tested out this hdmi feature to see if it actually plays a a full like movie up here on the screen that would be quite awesome to see down here we have notifications it appears yep and so nothing there but yeah 
again if you have one of these comment below if this actually plays video on the front all right so now we've done a full walk around we're going to get out on the road quick little driving impressions so let's get to it all right so before we get on the road i'm going to turn my ventilated seats on because it is getting quite warm out here at the beginning of june so let's go ahead and get on the road nice little feel tactile feel out of the the rotary knob here um, I'm gonna leave this air suspension. It's actually now that I've started driving um, It's lifting up out of entry exit mode and probably going to go to uh, It's going all the way up to normal so you can just see which mode is going up to based on where the light is flashing down here um, Good thing is if you have a, a low ceiling uh, parking garage this one is not super close um, but the air suspension is nice because it gives you the ability to lower it if you need to fit into um, a tight space. All right, so here we go, pulling out onto the road. Let's, uh, let's test the acceleration of this V6. And it's not bad. It's acceptable for a daily. Just enough power, nothing too crazy. Let me go ahead and turn the lane keep assist off, or they call it the active lane management in here. Um, yeah, but overall, the transmission is very smooth. You don't even really feel it shifting when, um, even when I was flooring it. Um, overall road noise, acceptable. I mean, it's pretty good. Um, there's not too much road noise in here. Uh, let's go over, we'll hit some bumps up here to see how they feel with the air suspension, but road noise is actually not too bad at the moment. Of course, we hit a red light. So um, that actually gives me a chance to talk about the brakes. Uh, brake pedal is actually quite firm. Um, normally in a luxury vehicle, you won't have a firm brake pedal. Um, it'll be more cushiony, more soft like a pillow, like you're pushing on a pillow. This one's actually quite firm, but over time, obviously, as you drive the vehicle more, uh, the brake pads wear down, it might come in and be a little bit softer. Um, but yeah, we'll head, go ahead and wait for this uh, red light to change and then we'll get back with you. All right, here we go. This guy getting a little close there. Hello. Um, one thing I do want to note or point out is the uh, the seats are quite firm. Um, the leather itself is soft, uh, but the padding behind the leather is actually quite firm, a lot firmer than I was expecting. Um, no real wind noise coming in. We're going about 50 miles an hour right now. I really don't hear any wind noise uh, like coming around the mirrors or anything at all. Um, just a little bit of tire noise and that's from partially from being on 20s. But yeah, overall smooth ride. Um, air suspension is in normal mode, not lowered down or raised up or anything that would affect your, your normal day-to-day -day, uh, driving quality. But overall, it's a uh, pretty nice AFC. We changed... Uh, the surface of the road changed from like asphalt to concrete and there's a lot more road noise on the concrete. Eh, it is what it is. Nothing's perfect. But yeah, overall it's really nice. We're going over a couple bumps now. We hit the, our, our almost patented at this point, uh, sour horsepower bridge bump up here for when we do car reviews. Um, we're gonna hit that at about between 45 and 50 miles an hour. And uh, we'll see how it handles that bump. But. Overall, I'm, I'm kind of super impressed with these things these days. It's uh, You're getting a lot of tech for the money. Hold on. Interrupt myself. First bump, good. Second bump, it kind of shimmied a little bit. But um, overall, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, you get a lot of tech for the money. Even with, like, you get a, your second screen... I mean, sixty thousand dollars is a lot of money, um, but for what it's competing against, basically you get three quite large digital screens between the dashboard, the main uh, radio, and the passenger display. Massive panoramic sunroof, air suspension standard, uh, very smooth trans transmission, wireless charging, all the ports you could want. You got the that that's just loaded with everything i wonder if this one actually has probably doesn't though i drove one of them that had night vision let's see if this had the night vision on it probably not that's your off-road modes yeah i don't believe yeah no night vision on this one 
Um, I forget which one that might have been. Might, hmm. It might have been on the summit or something like that. Now I'm getting distracted. But overall, at I think 63,000. Yeah. I like it. I really do like it. Plus, you get the, the four wheel drive Jeeps, you know, classic four wheel drive system. Basically, go anywhere. And then with the air suspension, you can raise it up if you decide you want to take your $60,000 Grand Cherokee rock crawling or something like that. And you have the tow hooks up at the front standard if you get stuck. So, I think it's a pretty good deal. I enjoy it. I like these things. But that's going to be, that's going to wrap up our, uh, our quick review for today. Um, unfortunately, I don't get too much time with these vehicles. I'm actually uh, got the call that my Durango is now out of service. It was getting its first oil change. But to stop rambling, uh, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. Comment below your thoughts on the Grand Cherokee, the new, all new designed 2022. Yeah, 22 Grand Cherokee um, Overland. I, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Have a great day.